So uh, yeah, so first of all, apologies if you are uh, here to learn about an eRush exam. Um, I'm not going to be talking about that today. But in its place, I'm going to be talking to you about the imminent demise of an old friend. So contrast-induced nephropathy. Everywhere you see this, textbooks, journal articles, online reviews, it gets defined like this. I, you can find this, this definition pretty much everywhere. Um, the third most common cause of, of hospital-acquired acute renal failure. Now, more and more, I'm starting to see this. So there's a pretty big disconnect there, right? Like, this is either one of the most common causes of renal failure there is, or it's a complete figment of our imagination, right? So that's a, there's a pretty big chasm between those, those two things. So um, we're going to talk about it today and see if we can kind of try to close that gap and wrap our minds around a little bit. So, um, so let's first of all just talk about what contrast-induced nephropathy is, where this idea comes from. And um, just to kind of make, make things really simple, uh, the idea is that somebody gets IV contrast, and at some later point, their creatinine is measured, and it's higher than it was before they got the IV contrast. So that's kind of the basis for, for the most of the studies on which we um, base our understanding of contrast-induced nephropathy. Now, the problem with that is, is that doesn't necessarily show causation, it shows a correlation, right? So what's the problem with this? Well, who do we give IV contrast to, right? We give, it to? we give it to people that we're doing CAT scans on. And who are we doing CAT scans on? We're get, doing CAT scans on people who are sick, right? So these are people who have disease processes. People who are sick get medications. People who are sick can become dehydrated. People who are sick get systemic in inflammation in their body, right? So there's a lot of things going on in the people who were CAT scanning. So the question is, are we placing the blame on IV contrast, or is the blame laying somewhere on these other things when these people are having renal dysfunction? So in 2013, 2014, a series of studies came out in the journal Radiology trying to address this. So um, there are three different types of studies, but in each of them, what they try to do is to tease out those variables and look at all those other, other things um, and, and make sure that we weren't just saying, hey, somebody got contrast and their, and their creatinine went up, so it must be the contrast. And every single one of these studies found that there wasn't a direct link between patients who got IV contrast and um, people having you know, true acute kidney injury. Last year, in 2017, emergency medicine got in the game, and the Annals put out um, two articles over the course of the year, uh, very similar kind of types of studies as the one done in uh, radiology, um, one was a meta-analysis, um, one was a um, propensity matching um, type study, and both of those studies also found that they could not find a link between acute kidney injury and IV contrast when, um, when kind of uh, taking into account all those other variables that I mentioned before. So this kind of wave of studies is what's starting to make people question whether this concept of contrast-induced nephropathy is really a thing at all. So, as contrast-induced nephropathy slowly fades away from our consciousness, something is taking its place. Post-contrast acute kidney injury. And they're similar, but there's a subtle difference there, right? <laughs> like, so, so, sure, they got contrast. Sure, something ha bad happened to their kidneys. But, you know, it's, we're, we don't really know what, whether there's a connection there or not. So, um, so let's talk about the difference in, in the studies of these two things. So I already talked about where, where our idea of contrast-induced nephropathy came from. Um, the thing that, to mention about this is that, you know, most of these studies just measured that there was an elevation of creatinine, um, but they didn't necessarily say whether that had some sort of clinical significance or whether two days later that creatinine came back down to normal. These studies also didn't, didn't study how many of those people creatinine went down after getting IV contrast. So there's a possibility that if you studied that, you could find, make up a study that showed IV contrast as renal protective. So the new idea is that a person gets IV contrast, but that same person also has you know, volume depletion, might be getting nephrotoxic drugs, might be having disease process, other disease processes going on, and all those things together are causing acute kidney injury. So things that we actually care about, you know, need for dialysis, mortality, these are the things that actually need to be studied. And in the studies that actually looked at all these things together, um, didn't find that link that, that showed that the IV contrast was the causative agent of this AKI. So, one other thing worth mentioning is that not all contrast has been created equal. Um, we currently today use low or iso 
osmolar contrast agents. For, this, is, this happened in the early 21st century. All of you are using these the two agents on your, my left, your right. Um, high osmolar agents were used for you know, all of eternity before that, and most of our studies that found contrast induced nephropathy um, to be a thing were done when that agent was being used, um, and it's thought that our newer agents today probably um, aren't nephrotoxic, where the, the high osmolarity ones may have been. So that might have something to do with our changing um, thoughts on this as well. So here's the big question. What do the radiologists think? So every year, the American College of Radiology puts out this manual on contrast media. They update it every couple of years. And this is what they say. If you're going to use a threshold at all of who you can give IV contrast to, use a GFR less than 30. I would be willing to bet most of you are using a threshold um, higher than that right now. The same manual also says that if someone doesn't have one of these risk factors, you don't need to, to check their creatinine at all. So I get it, a lot of our, most of our patients have one of these things, but some don't, so if, they, if someone meets all these criteria, don't give them contrast. So you might be saying to myself, but I'm just a lowly emergency physician, what can I possibly do to change anything here? Well, there's something you can all do. First thing, you can call up your radiologist, ring, ring, tell them, hey, this is what the ACR says, let's make some changes. You can write your own guideline. I did, I typed this up and we submitted it and, this is, and now we have a guideline that we use at Temple um, that I wrote, emergency physician wrote. I'd be happy to share it with anyone who wants it. So tomorrow, you can stop doing creatinine levels on people who meet these criteria. Tomorrow, you can change your GFR cutoff to less than 30. And at the end of the day, this is a risk benefit analysis. We're learning what are the risks of IV contrast they're low. What's the benefit? It's finding dangerous diseases. So don't be afraid to give it. I'm going to end with this slide here um, that was from this Emergency Medicine Cases podcast because I think it's the best summary of this that I've seen. And that summary basically is, let's not be get too focused on contrast. Let's think about all of those other things that put our hospitalized patients at risk of acute kidney injury and focus more, more intently on those. And if you do that, you won't be afraid to give IV contrast. Thank you guys for your time.